Sometimes it's red. All right, so. Red. Right. Wrong. Left. Campo Fiorin from Mashi. Oh, man. You know, now let's let's go back a ways. Uh, there's no way. I thought there's no way I was going to be able to feature these ones. I know. I was shocked when I saw it. It's such an institution in the Italian wine imports and all very high-priced wines. That $25.99 must be wrong, the retail. It's about, I think it's regular retail is like 32 bucks or something, you know. Mm. And um, these were the guys that basically invented the Rapasso method, which yeah, I, I, right. I explained, you know, at length on the, in the article. It was really, really interesting, you know. Um, because it was so interesting because what they they were making amarone amarone is a big deal you know in, in, in Italy it's been like been a big deal for I don't know 100 years or so where they dry the grapes on mats on top of the winery for six months now how they do it in the middle of winter I don't know but anyhow so they take these dried grapes you know and then they crush them in the middle of the year so they pick them like in October and then they crush them in like May or April all right and then they throw what was left away, the, the must. Well, Masi came up with the idea, well, not, let's, why throw it away? Let's take this year's wine and, and ferment it and then pass it through the must of the Amarone, the dried grapes, which had a lot of concentrated flavor. And they came up with this, with this term called ripasso, which means pass Passover. through. Passover. No, pass through. Passover is a different thing. <laughs> yeah, sorry, that's wrong. <laughs> Any, yeah, wrong religion. Anyway, um, and they invented that thing, and now everybody's doing it. I mean, everybody. I mean, it's ridiculous. Well, I think Rapasso, when you go to the Italian restaurant and you see Brunello, not Brunello's, but you see Amarone's at Amarone. like $160 a bottle, and you see a Rapasso, it's a great oh, value. Phenomenal compared value. Compared to Absolutely phenomenal value. Big Brother. But this, I didn't realize that's what this was. That's, they, they, they mess around with the, with the blend now. Because so is, it is Veronese, so it, this it, is from it, the area where Romeo and Juliet's uh, setting is. Two gentlemen of Verona, yeah. And uh, here's, the, here's the problem. With, well, it's not a problem. See, they can do whatever way they want, and they do. And, and this wine normally would be called Valpolicello Rapasso, but they don't use all three grapes. They use only Corvina and Rondinella. They don't use the Molinar because they don't like Molinar. They don't think it adds anything. So by law now, they can't call it Valpolicella, and they don't care. No, right. <laughs> That's the beauty it's of great, it. It's a great expression of what it's supposed to be, and if you want to know what those kinds of wines, what the general character trend is, that this is a great example, and it's really well made. Fifteen ninety nine. That's that's half price. That's so you know that Verona is the, the setting of, right? You can go to the balcony right. in Verona with it, and there's a statue of... Of uh, Rome, uh, Juliet, there. Did you know that? No. So if you Google that picture of the statue, you'll see that she's a bronze statue, and she's got a she's got this draped garment, if I remember right. But one of her breasts is exposed, and as you know, that uh, bronze patinas over time, except for the breast, because everybody's touching it. <laughs> <laughs> what did it feel like? It's really funny. <laughs> you go there, and it's like all bright, shiny and things. 